I will be doing a quick tank review for the Japanese Tier 6 Premium Heavy Tank. Heavy Tank number 6. From this point onward, I will call it a Tiger 1 for short. Because for all attended purposes, this tank, it is the exact same tank as the German have at a Tier 7. But it is not as good. Due to the Japanese Tiger 1, the gun it is slightly worse. The the horsepower to ton ratio and the engine it is not as good as the Tier 7. And the radio it is not that good. The Japanese Tiger 1 share all of the all of the strengths and weaknesses as the German Tiger 1 does. The only way to obtain the Japanese Tiger 1 it is through the end game shop with uh, real money. At a later date and time, this vehicle will be added to the Japanese in-game tech tree and can be bought with gold then. This vehicle, for all intended purposes, you will be treating it if it's uh, like the German Tier 7 Tiger 1, but at Tier 6 only. This vehicle shares a lot of the a lot of the same weaknesses as the uh, as the Tiger One does. The only real difference when it comes to armor for the Jap Japanese Tiger One compared to the German Tiger One is that uh, the armor armor layout it is a tiny bit different. And the Kapla here, it is a major weak part of the tank. This tank, while I was using it, heavy tank number six can pen other Japanese heavy tank number six receipts. This tank, I find, due to the armor thickness, the crew and the modules can be damaged easily enough. Let's get to the stats of the vehicle now. The Japanese Tiger 1. You will have 950 hit points. That is a lot of hit points for a tier 6 heavy tank to have. So you can take a good amount of hits before you are killed. Watch out if you are at the wrong place at the wrong time. Because if enemy focus their fire on you, on you, you can be killed easily enough. This vehicle, it can weigh potentially up to 61 tons. My setup, it is about 58 tons, which will give me a decent enough horsepower to ton ratio for the 650 horsepower engine. This Maybach 650 horsepower engine have a 20% chance of engine fire, so watch out for that. This 600 and 50 horsepower engine will allow you to have about 11.27 horsepower to one ton. You will have problems reaching the top speed of 40 kilometers. You can only reach the top speed when you are going downhill only. The 11.27 horsepower to one ton will allow you to get from place A to uh, place B quickly enough. This vehicle hold for verse, it is decent enough at 26 degrees. This vehicle shares the exact same armor value as the German Tiger 1 does. The, uh, the weak parts are the same. Lower, lower glazer plate, machine gun port, the driver's vision port, the hatch doors, the top of the tank heel, the Kapla heel, it is a major weak part of the tank. The armor value for the vehicle, it is 100 millimeters in the front. The uh, the lower glazes plate can be penned easily enough and the damage and the engine can be damaged easily enough. The gun mantlet, it is 100 millimeters plus, but if you are face hugging it and have the advantage of being a bit more taller than the than the Tiger 1. If you just hit the top part of the tank here or the Kapla, you can pen it easily enough. 
the the capilla it is less than 100 millimeters thick so even a tier 4 or a tier 5 gun can pin it with ease the the armor thickness for the whole side it is 80 millimeters if you just angle the armor right to the left and to the right you can ricochet some round as, as well because the armor it is thick enough to to do that 80 millimeters for the uh, for the turret and for the whole side it can be pinned easily enough the engine can be knocked out easily enough with a well placed shot to the engine department here real it is 80 millimeters but that can be pinned easily enough the German 88mm L56 gun. It has a high rate of, rate of fire with the right equipment and perks for the crew. You can have about 9 rounds per aimant, which is quite good. The pen, it is decent enough. You will pen most vehicles below tier 6 receipts, but when you are facing well armored vehicles from tier 6 to tier 8, you will have problems with the L56 gun. So, I would recommend that you, if you are, you are going to be using armor piercing round only in this tank, then aim at a weak part of the tank that you can pen. When it comes to heavily armored vehicles from tier 6 to tier 8, I would use a PCR in this tank. The damage output it is good. Your average uh, shell would do about 220 damage. When you combine the about 9 rounds per a minute with 220 damage, you can inflict a good amount of damage within a minute if you can get those 9 rounds to penetrate and hit. The accuracy of the gun, it is decent enough. 0.38 so you can be a uh, can be a uh, be a uh, be a be a sniper within the middle of the front line push if you must the aiming time it is decent enough at 2.3 seconds the gun depression it is the same as the tiger one eight degrees downward while the gun elevation upward it is 15. The, the turret traverse it is better on the Japanese Tiger. It is at 20 degrees. Watch out for enemy tanks that can easily flank you and do a circle of death to you. The uh, top view range it is 370 meters. 370 meters that is quite good. When you add in crew perks and binocular telescopes, you can easily reach the maximum view range of 450 meters. The vehicle radio, it is decent enough, 620 meters. But when you add in crew perks and, and equipment, you can have up to 751 meters signal range. Let's cover the pros and cons for this tank. The pros and cons for the Japanese Tiger 1. As this is a tier 6 tank, you will have a regular matchmaking. You will be getting yourself into tier 6 to tier 8 matchmaking. When you are top tier in a tier 6 match, you can do quite well in this tank if you know what you are doing. When you get yourself into a tier 7 and 8 match, you need to be careful when you are facing tier 7, and, tier 7 and 8 tanks. They can kill you easily enough. I generally find if I am top tier in a tier 6 match, I can play this, uh, play this tank quite aggressively when I am top tier and do quite well in the tank. But when I am in a tier 7 or a tier 8 match, I generally find playing this uh, tank as a, as a support tank, I generally do quite well in it. Now how do you use the vehicle? Uh, this is just like the uh, tier 7 Tiger 1. 
you will be using the Japanese Tiger as a frontline heavy tank, as a support tank, and as a flanking tank as well. What is good about the Japanese Tiger? This vehicle just plays like the German Tiger. This vehicle, it is a good crew trainer to work on your Japanese heavy tank crew before the uh, Japanese heavy tanks are added in at a, uh, at a later date and time. If you are top teal in this tank, you can do quite well in it. This is a pro and con as well, but the Japanese Tiger 1 shares a, a lot of the same pros and cons as the German Tiger 1 does. Now to the cons of the tank. This tank can be killed easily enough. The, the crew and the modules can be damaged easily enough. Also, the Kapla, it is a it is a weak part of the tank. Let cover the equipment, ammo layout, and consumables you will be using while driving the Japanese Tiger 1. Let's begin off with the consumables. I would go with a first aid kit to treat crew member injuries, a repair kit to repair module damage, and a fire extinguisher to put out, to put out engine fires. This vehicle carries a lot of ammo, 92 rounds of ammo, so you will not have the problem of running out of ammo in this tank. The majority of the ammo I would be using in this tank it is armor piercing round. The AP pen it is enough to go through most vehicles up to tier 8 if you, if you know where you are shooting at. You will have problems penning enemy tanks with the armor piercing round if you are facing a well armored tank from tier 6 to tier 8. I would recommend that you fire APCR rounds at well armored tanks from tier 6 to, to tier 8 if you have a problem pinning it with a regular armor piercing round. I would at least carry 12 APCR rounds in case of a emergency during the match when you have to pen a well armored tank. APCR rounds will cost you 3200 credits or 8 gold. I would carry some HG on you just in case if you if you have to penetrate a semi armored tank or just to reset cap. The equipment that I would be using on the Tiger 1 it is binocular telesc telesc telescopes which will allow me to have maximum view range when it is activated. Improve ventilation class 3, which will improve the tank and the crew performance as well. The gun rammer, gun rammer to decrease the loading, loading time even more. The other equipment that you can use if you want to, it is uh, wet ammo whack to Increase the chance that uh, this tank it is not going to get get ammo racked as much. When you add the uh, ammo rack class two and perks as well, it will greatly reduce the chance of the tank getting ammo racked. Toolbox to get your repair repair speed done faster. A heavy heavy spall liner to add extra protection and just ramming a G round and to increase the chance that your crew it is not going to get injured or killed. If you want to de decrease the aim time even more, use the enhanced gun lane drive, which will decrease the aim time by 10%. To increase your view range, use coded optics or binoc binocular telescopes. It is up to personal preference. For, for perks for heavy tanks, I would generally recommend 
brother in arms and repair for everyone. All of the perks after brother in, uh, in arms and repairs, it is up to you to suit whichever heavy tank you are using. Six cents would be a six cents would be a good idea for the commander to have as well. I have three replays to show you how to use the Japanese Tiger One property. Let's get to those replays now. This uh, replay, I will show you how you can use the Japanese Tiger One armor effective effectively when you are top tier in a tier 6 match and how well this uh, this tank can perform when you are facing against many enemies. Let me speed up the replay a bit to get to the front line faster. First thing first, in this match I noticed there was a PD4 Hydra, which is a rare tank in the game. And I was looking around to see where I, where I was needed. Right away, there were enough tanks going to the right side and the middle of the map, so just only four tanks on this side of the map here. The KB-1S, the T-40, the Excelsior, and me. With artillery for backup. I am looking around, seeing what is around me, seeing the path is secure up to the castle. I used it as cover as I began the push on this side of the map. Seeing the Kibi Vuness and the Athos here have the mm, high road on the right side, I took the low road. That Nashorn, he fired at at me. He fired at me, but due to the angling of the gun mantlet armor and the hull, the round just ricocheted right off. I had the vehicle angled a bit to the right, so my armor thickness in the front was was more than 114 meters mi millimeters I mean seeing this side uh, it is clear for the most part the group grouped up and we began our push to the enemy base So far, I've been only I only been using AP rounds because most vehicles in this uh, in this match I can pen with ease. That J Panzer four. That J Panzer four tried to penetrate me. But I angled my my armor at an angle, and it ricocheted off. Seeing the J Panzer IV falling back, and the other vehicles are on the right side of the map. At the time, I thought artillery was on the other side of, side of the map. So I began to be a bit reckless here and charged until I see this. Enemy. I'm using the rich line here to to shoot the artillery while falling back while I am low. After loading, I fall back a bit. That's Jake on the four. Hits hit me. Also the artillery there. Now I am on no health. 
So I got to the lowlands here. By now, it's just only those three vehicles left. By now, I am a one shot, even from HE, from those three vehicles remaining. I am looking around, seeing where I can push over the over the ridge line without being killed. Now, now it is just me versus the Jake Ponder Four, the FV, and the SU Eight. I am keeping an eye on vehicles that could flank me. That SU Eight, I saw it was was going to be going over the hill to shoot at me. I finished it off. I could have had gotten a gotten a top gun here if I played my cards right. Seeing the FV and the Jake Panther 4 moving to the B2 area, I used the hill here as cover as I advanced. I had no idea where that round went. I uh, finished that Jake Panzer 4 off before it could kill me. This replay, I did uh, quite well. I almost got a Top Gun medal, and I did about uh, 1500 damage in this uh, match. Let's go to the next replay. This uh, replay, I am in a tier 7 match with uh, one of my friends, Mini Turk, who I uh, platooned with in the past. I am in a tier 7 match to show you how well you can uh, perform in a uh, tier 7 or a tier 8 match if you played the Japanese Tiger one well. Let me speed up. Let me speed the replay up a bit. In the first minute, I thought I should have had gone down the E F line area, but seeing where Mini Turk is going. I am heading to the hills here to support him and the allies in the city there. I am being careful as I climb this hill. I know that there are vehicles in the H line that could easily, easily shoot me if I poke over. I'm using, I'm using the uh, rock to to my side here to cover my side armor from the tanks on the hill there that could shoot me. Seeing on the map where the E25 is. I peeked over when I knew that that E25 was that that you'll see there. I, mean, I meant was busy. Here I tried to see if my gun could could reach where the E25 is. Here I could not uh, cannot shoot him where I was. So I had to move to a spot where I could. The area where that E25 is, that's a good, uh, good, uh, good spot to be if you have a TD like that. Right there, if the E25. Uh, Twenty-five uh, played quite well in the match. He could could stay there, protected for the most part during the entire match, and accumulated a lot of damage in the match. Yes. 
uh, Mini Turk and his group cleared the city. That that as you there, it have to go. I finished that as you off after it had fired. I uh, waited for Lady 25 to get up close and personal to finish him off first. By this time of the match, I noticed that Mini Turk was in trouble. So, me and him, we focused our fire on the KB there. I am keeping the KB occupied as Mini and his group there. Flank it. When the gun loaded, I was going to finish that KB off, but someone finished it off for me. That M4. I loaded a PTR just to make sure my round is going to, to finish it off. Now, me and Mini Turk had uh, the con contribution medal in the bag. Now we just have to finish off the artillery, which usually they are at this part of the map. Coming up, coming up here, me and Mini Turk coordinated our action, so I could uh, get the top gun here. I still had that APCR round loaded just to make sure that I have the 6 kill in the bag. I waited for Mini Turk to, uh, to, to distract the M12 to make sure he fired and missed uh, at Mini Turk. When Mini Turk moved, I. I shoot at the M12 there. That was a bit of a low hole there. I should have tried to finish him off in one shot. This replay I did quite well. I did 2100 damage. I, I got an A, a top gun medal as well, and I got an my master ace ace tanker badge in this uh, tank during this uh, this match let's go to the next replay now this uh, replay i am in a tier 7 match let me speed the replay up a bit by the way when the match uh, began i went the one to one area. Now I am at the front lines here. I am I am using the uh, Terrain here as uh, extra protection when I poke out. Uh, that uh, VK, I landed a decent shot on that vehicle. It was a bit of a uh, low wall there. While in this area, I angled my armor a bit. Have I advanced uh, forward? I used the hills to my advantage as well. Here I began to do some uh, some uh, flanking tactics. When the enemy vehicles were falling back, I shot their side while they were falling back. I 
I am using the health the health quite a to protect myself against uh, anything to the right side. I almost finished that M44 off, but someone uh, killed it. A funny KB took care of it for me. I am using the hill to my right side to so not to be in a in a line of sight for the two KB ones. The ISL, it would have had been a good idea to shoot a PCR at it. I tried aiming at a weak part. That round uh, just ricocheted. Seeing this area is, uh, is secured, the ally tanks began to finish the two KBs off. I set that uh, KB on fire there. Here, I uh, poke over the witch line a bit to shoot at the uh, remaining vehicles on the hill there. Seeing only one vehicle there, I entered the cap circle to help the timer go down faster. If seeing seeing that that uh, there were only a few remaining vehicles left on the hilltop there, I changed my mind. And and use the hill here to, to to increase my armor thickness when I shoot at the remaining vehicles on the hill. This is where my uh, my usefulness to the team came to a end. The uh, the fury there. He won the match by uh, capping out. I did uh, not too bad in this uh, match. I did about uh, 1700 damage. Let's go to the garage now and do a brief recap for this tank. Let's uh, do a brief recap on the Japanese Tiger 1 or otherwise known as the heavy tank Number six. This this tank overall, it is a average tank, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. This tank shares many of the same same strengths and weaknesses as as also also stats as the German T7 Tiger One does. As a premium tank, you can train any Japanese heavy tank crew members in this while making extra credits at the at the same time. You can play the heavy tank number six if it was the Tiger One in game. You can buy this tank through the in game shop with uh, with real money, or whenever the tank it is available. For the Japanese tech tree lineup, you can purchase purchase it with gold then. As this uh, tank, it is the only Japanese heavy tank in the game at the moment. It is a good idea to uh, purchase this uh, tank and work on a Japanese uh, Japanese heavy heavy tank crew. So by the time that the that the Japanese heavies are added into the game, you will have a good crew to good crew to to work on. While while going down the Japanese heavy tank line, if you are planning to do that. Overall, this tank it is a fun tank to play, as it is a Tiger One pretty much, 
but at tier 6. This tank, I actually enjoy using it, uh, it a lot, so it is a keeper. I would only recommend the, the heavy tank number 6 to people if they want to have a fun Japanese tier 6 tank to use, or if you are planning to to go down the Japanese heavy tank tank line, buy it and use it. So by the time that the that the Japanese heavies are added into the game, you will have a good crew to use while you are going down that that line. Whenever they are added added to the game. I hope that uh, that you learn a thing or two about uh, how to use the, use the Japanese heavy tank number six properly. If you like this uh, video, follow my channel and also leave a comment as well. Good luck on the battlefield, everyone.